I'm because I'm laughing at him because he, he's like getting curved. All right. Like if anything, it's like I don't want to be like Pepe Le Pew. He looked thirsty. He looked. <laughs> Right. You know what I mean? Like I don't want like she don't like him. Like right. Like that. That's yeah. I, I never thought like I, since I'm watching, I should do this. <laughs> right. Right. I mean, but then again, I know that's anecdotal evidence because that's just me. But that's me. I mean, I like and so now we canceling Pepe Le Pew or cartoon. <laughs> right. Like why? Why are we trying to neuter everything? Doesn't make sense to me. Welcome to the TMF podcast where we have too many. Feelings. I'm your host T Staples, and I'm joined by She Man Man Freddie B. You already know what it is. Do we? And what it do with your girl Lana Boo? Boo yow. Hey, and we got one more on the line today. It's the it's it's our producer. You know him as it's the good doctor, Doctor Buddy Lee. That's right. And for all y'all listening, we're bringing you all these feelings from the comfort of our home. That's right, 100 remote. So if you feel our show, show us how you feel by subscribing. So you can get notified when the new episodes drop. Subscribe, y'all. Come on now. Look, and if you like what you're hearing, send us a message. Our handles are in the description below. We love to hear how you feel. In today's episode, we're talking about cancer culture and how it affects us today. But first, it's time for a moment I like to call the internet never Never lost. lost. (laughs) That's right. As I navigate through the endless insanity of interconnectivity that we all call the Internet, I read across a TED Talk that I believe illustrates a bit of what we're here today to talk about. So, everybody, take a listen. Now, there's a few tweets in this. Let me just for one. There's a few tweets in this. I narrated them so that you guys can see what he was showing or hear what he was showing. So here we go. Early days of Twitter, it was like a place of radical de-shaming. People would admit shameful secrets about themselves, and other people would say, oh my God, I'm exactly the same. (laughs) Voiceless people realized that they had a voice, and it was powerful and eloquent. If a newspaper ran some racist or homophobic column, we realized we could do something about it. We could get them. We could hit them with a weapon that we understood, but they didn't. A social media shaming. Advertisers would withdraw their advertising. When powerful people misused their privilege, we were going to get them. This was like the democratization of justice. Hierarchies were being leveled out. We were going to do things better. Power shifts fast. And it began to feel weird and empty when there wasn't a powerful person who had misused their privilege that we could get. A day without a shaming began to feel like a day picking fingernails and treading water. Let me tell you a story. It's about a woman called Justine Sacco. She was a PR woman from New York with 170 Twitter followers, and she'd tweet little acerbic jokes to them, like this one on a plane from New York to London. We're a German dude. You're in first class. It's 2014. Get some deodorant. Enter monologue as inhale bio. Thank God for pharmaceuticals. So Justine chuckled to herself and press send and got no replies and felt that sad feeling that we all feel when the internet doesn't congratulate us for being funny. (laughs) Black silence when the internet doesn't talk back. And then she got to Heathrow and she had a little time to spare before her final leg. So she thought up another funny little acerbic joke. Going to Africa, hope I don't get AIDS. Just kidding, I'm white. And she chuckled to herself, press send, got on the plane, got no replies, turned off her phone, fell asleep, woke up 11 hours later, turned on her phone while the plane was taxiing on the runway, and straight away there was a message from somebody that she hadn't spoken to since high school that said, I am so sorry to see what's happening to you. And then another message from my best friend. You need to call me right now. You are the worldwide number one trending topic on Twitter. (laughs) What had happened was that one of her 170 followers had sent the tweet to a Gorka journalist, and he retweeted it to his 15,000 followers. And then it was like a bolt of lightning. A few weeks later, I I talked to the Gorka journalist. I emailed him and asked him how it felt, and he said it felt delicious. And then he said, but I'm sure she's fine. But she wasn't fine. 
because while she slept, Twitter took control of her life and dismantled it piece by piece. First, there were the philanthropists. If Justine's unfortunate words about AIDS bother you, join me in supporting CARES work in Africa. Then came the beyond horrified. Really has no words for that horribly disgusting, racist as fuck tweet from Justine Sacco. Was anybody on Twitter that night? A few of you. Did Justine's joke overwhelm your Twitter feed the way it did mine? It did mine, and I thought what, what everybody thought that night, which was,、uh, wow, somebody's screwed. Somebody's life is about to get terrible. And I sat up in my bed and I put the pillow behind my head. And then I thought, I'm not entirely sure that joke was intended to be racist. Maybe instead of gleefully flaunting her privilege, she was mocking the gleeful flaunting of privilege. There is a comedy tradition of this, like South Park or Colbert or Randy Newman. Maybe Justine Sacco's crime was not being as good at it as Randy Newman. In fact, when I met Justine a couple of weeks later in a bar, she was just crushed, and I asked her to explain the joke. And she said, "Living in America puts us in a bit of a bubble when it comes to what is going on in the third world." I was making fun of that bubble. You know, another woman on Twitter that night, a New Statesman writer, Helen Lewis. She reviewed my book on public shaming and wrote that she tweeted that night. I'm not sure that. Her joke was intended to be racist, and she said straight away she got a fury of tweets saying, "Well, you're just a privileged bitch too." And so, to her shame, she wrote, she shut up and watched as Justine's life got torn apart. It started to get darker. Everyone, go report this cunt at Justine Sacco. Then came the calls for her to be fired. Going to Africa? I hope I don't get AIDS. Just kidding. I'm white. Good luck with the job hunt. In the new year, thousands of people around the world decided it was their duty to get her fired. Last tweet of your career, hashtag sorry not sorry. Corporations got involved, hoping to sell their products on the back of Justine's annihilation. Next time you plan to tweet something stupid before you take off, make sure you're getting on a go-go flight. CC Justine Sacco. A lot of companies were making good money that night. You know, Justine's name was normally googled 40 times a month. That month, between December the 20th and the end of December, her name was Googled 1,220,000 times.、Uh, and one internet economist told me that that meant that Google made somewhere between $120,000 and $468,000 from Justine's annihilation. Whereas those of us doing the actual shaming, we got nothing. <laughs> we were like unpaid shaming interns for Google. <laughs> And then came the trolls. I'm actually kind of hoping Justine Sacco gets AIDS. LOL. Somebody else that night wrote, "Somebody HIV positive should rape this bitch, and then we'll find out if her skin color protects her from AIDS." And that person got a free pass. Nobody went after that person. We were also excited about destroying Justine, and our shaming brains are so simple-minded that we couldn't also handle destroying somebody who was inappropriately destroying Justine. Justine was really uniting a lot of disparate groups that night, from philanthropists to rape the bitch. I hope you get fired, you demented bitch. Just let the world know you're planning to ride bareback while in Africa. Oh my God, retarded racist bitch! Retweet at Justine Sacco. Going to Africa? Hope I don't get AIDS. Just kidding. I'm white. Yeah, right. Women always have it worse than men. When a man gets shamed, it's I'm going to get you fired. When a woman gets shamed, it's I'm going to get you fired and raped and. Cut out your uterus, and then Justine's employers got involved. I see on a Justine Sacco tweet. This is an outrageous, offensive comment. Employee in question currently unreachable. And that's when the anger turned to excitement. All I want for Christmas is to see Justine Sacco's face when her plane lands and she checks her inbox voicemail. Hashtag fired. What we had was a delightful narrative arc. We knew something that Justine didn't. Can you think of anything less judicial? Than this, Justine was asleep on a plane and unable to explain herself, and her inability was a huge part of the hilarity. On Twitter that night, we were like toddlers crawling towards a gun. Somebody worked out exactly which plane she was on, so they linked to a flight tracker website. LHR to CPT. A hashtag began trending worldwide. Hashtag has Justine landed yet? It's kind of wild to see someone self-destruct without them even being aware of it. 
Hashtag has Justine landed yet? Seriously, I just want to go home to go to bed. But everyone in the bar is so into has Justine landed yet. Can't look away. Can't leave. And guess what? Yes, there was. Yep, at Justine Sacco has in fact landed at Cape Town International. She's decided to wear sunnies as a disguise. So why did we do it? I think some people were genuinely upset, but I think for other people it's because Twitter is basically a mutual approval machine. We surround ourselves with people who feel the same way we do, and we approve each other, and that's a really good feeling. And if somebody gets in the way, we scream them out. And do you know what that's the opposite of? It's the opposite of democracy. Mm. You know what that's the opposite of? That's the opposite of democracy. Listen, for all y'all out there who just heard this Internet Never Lost, do you think everyone should be subjected to the same scrutiny when it comes to being canceled? And what do you feel about the current cancel culture today? Send us a message. Our handles are in the description below. And let us know how you feel. This has been yours truly, T. Staples, in this week's edition of The Internet Never, Never Lost. Lost. <laughs> Woo! Catch you next time. All right, Lana Boo, afraid to be Dr. Buddy Lee, man. Wow. What did y'all think? Give me a comment. Come on, let's decompress this now. Internet never lost. Justine Sacco, you know, cancel culture. What do y'all think about what you just heard? I don't know how I missed that whole situation. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not on Twitter, so that's probably how, but. Oh, yeah, well, then, yeah, you definitely missed that. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah but yeah when I heard that tweet I was like whoa you know well this um, is now this is and this is a, a a tweet that is is quite old so this is back yeah when the cancel yeah, culture thing getting started yeah. right mm-hmm. around 2014 2015 right, exactly yeah but just in general I mean in my opinion of the cancel culture is that it's it's like a it's a catch twenty two it's a double edged sword basically like on one hand. It's it's relatively good on one hand because it kind of gives a voice and power to a group of, I guess you want to call them like disenfranchised individuals who are like victims of things like sexual harassment and racism. But on the other hand, it's it's getting out of hand because it's being used too loosely and has the potential to lose its power because people want to cancel people for simple like differences of opinion on certain topics. Mm. So, um, like, for 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 those people who have been canceled for, like, for example, a, a Bill Cosby or Harvey Weinstein, mm-hmm. you know, they created a culture of um, sexist, misogynistic type of environment that is unhealthy. And for for you know for situations like that, I'm, I'm I'm like yes, you know what I'm saying like it's time to stand up. This has been going on for decades, you know, like you know, hashtag me too. Like, let's, you know, let's go ahead and cancel this, this, this narrative basically. But in other arenas, you have people who are trying to cancel people like Lizzo because she promoted a detox tea, you know, because she's, you know, pro, you know, I'm a happy fat girl, you know, and she said that herself, like, but when she promoted a detox tea, like they tried to cancel Lizzo and I'm like, okay, now you're just, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's a difference of opinion. If she wanted to do something like promote a detox tea, you know, just for a cleanse or something like that, she's not, she's not saying that, oh, now I'm unhappy. Oh, oh, you know, I'm anti-fat people, you know, or nothing like that. So I, sometimes I just feel like they just go overboard with the whole let's cancel this, let's cancel that. But I definitely feel like it has its place in the culture. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So her, she, so what she said was going to Africa, hope I don't get AIDS. Just kidding. I'm white. Yeah. Um, cancelable, cancelable offense. Uh, or, or normal that's white her opinion. opinion. That's her I, opinion. I mean, it's, I mean, it's her opinion. I don't know if, I kind of feel like adding I'm white kind of made it worse um, than if she just would have stopped it. Just kidding. Um, because it's like you added I'm white to say what? You know, um, should her life, you know, I mean, like, should people have, you know, wished rape upon her? 
you know, and things like that. I think <laughs> death, that's rape, that's all death that. <laughs> rape, you know, and stuff like that. I feel like that was going too far. Um, should you have been called out, you know, because that was something that was seen as offensive? Mm-hmm. I'm here for the calling out of it. I'm not here for the, you know, I hope you get raped. I hope you die, you know, mm-hmm. portion of it. Like, so it's, like, it's like there's there's a thin line, you know, between calling out and then between, you know, going too far. It's a thin line between hate and hate. Mm. Hate and hate. <laughs> so, so, so Freddie B, you know, cancel. Cancel her for this tweet. What, what do you think? I mean, the tweet, like when she, you know, like I, I think I think I kind of remember it, but the uh the tweet I, I i get i actually get the spirit of her tweet of what she would you know yeah it was a was joke tweeting, right you know? yeah it's a joke it's like tongue in cheek you know what i mean it's like because it's like she because like i mean at the end when she put just kidding i'm white it's like it's like that's so absurd to think that oh i'm not gonna get aids just because of the color of my skin right and so you know it's kind of like tongue in cheek based off american americans how far removed we are from um, mm. You know different things that are happening in the world, and so it and was actually, actually, actually what you just said is, is similar to what uh, the narrator said when he sat down with her at the bar. You know when he asked her the same question, it, it, it was how talking about how far removed we are in the first world from what's going on in these other countries. That's interesting. You you caught that as well, right? I mean, I, I and I guess I mean I'm I'm able to catch it because I've been you know I've been to South Africa like where she was going. I've been there. And I've driven through like the slums there, you know, and, and and talked to the people and you've seen it firsthand, you know what I mean? And so, you know, it's like when you go to these places, you see like, oh, it's like a lot. It's like a swaths of people living in these areas where it's it's like eight porta potties on the outside of they, they whole like little village wow. or town or wherever you want to call it. Like they ain't even got they only have plumbing or running water or anything. Mm-hmm. Like you want to use a restroom, you got to walk half a mile out and then use the porta potty but you know mm. people ain't doing that every single time they got to pee and poop like i live in my house and sometimes i barely want to just walk to my restroom to go pee so <laughs> hey what you gonna pee in the bottle what you gonna do hey i mean sometimes you you land in the bed you comfortable and you sleep and you wake man. up like oh i gotta pee like right. think about the thing about you sleep and then you wake up like oh damn i gotta pee you gotta get up and then turn on a light and then go into you know your restroom to pee you don't even want to do that most sometimes people don't even want to do that now, yeah, now world extrapolate problems. that out. <laughs> right. That's definitely first world problem. Now extrapolate that out to where you gotta leave your house and then walk down the street to use the restroom, the porta potty. And mm. it is a porta potty at that. Mm. So now think about like you probably gonna you probably just gonna go outside or on the side of your house and pee or something like that. So, you know, I I've seen these different things and you know, it's like, oh snap. Like you go different places, like you know, places I've been in the Dominican Republic, like I said, South Africa, all those types of places and even in Europe. Eastern Europe, you know, it's like, oh, it's different here. So, mm-hmm. like I said, I, I, I get, I get where the where the tweet was coming from. You know, it's just unfortunately, um, you know, I read in one article she's not a comedian, and that's the thing. Like when you're a comedian, you get certain latitudes that regular people don't get. You know, because like like um Ch- Dave Chappelle or or um Bill Burr had Bill Burr said that, then the, you know he wouldn't have got attacked like that because his brand of comedy and what he does, and he's a comedian, he's a famous comedian, so. Specifically with the tweet, you know, I get the spirit. It's just, and it, and it's just the underlying thing of black people and melanated people don't get a fair shake. So it's like, you know, you think on the flip side, like there's other white people who are ignorant enough to read this and really feel, you know, really believe that and then perpetuate the stuff. Yeah, that's that, the da- that's the, the danger the of the tweet, right? It. Right. That's the danger. Right. They they perpetuate the 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 negative spirit in that tweet. But like, cause like the, the the comic, the comedy she had there is multi layered. It's tongue in cheek. When you deal with tongue in cheek type humor, that's not just your basic surface level humor. It's like you got to read it and understand it and get it. And stupid people who are racist who really believe like nigga I'm white so I'm better. Right. They not gonna get that. Mm-hmm. Dr. Buddy Lee, going to Africa. I believe. Hope I don't get AIDS. Just kidding. I'm white. I mean, everybody's entitled to their own opinion on how they feel about things, what they say about things. I mean, be honest with you, I believe a lot of times people take things out of context or they look for the negative in it to find something to discredit somebody. 
I've even heard a lot of comedians talk about that they don't even want to do comedy right now. Even Chris Rock did some said something about it recently. Yep. He says comedy is not the same anymore because you say the wrong thing, but everybody knows that we poke fun at stuff. That's what makes it funny. And so I, I believe a lot of people are going too far with wanting to cancel. But the same thing, the same people who want to cancel can have they can say something just like I heard in that one where they said, I hope you get raped. It's like, what? Right. And, and nobody, right. that went unchecked. That, that, yeah, that I was like, how, how does that, that slide? Got retweeted exactly. over 100,000 times. It went unchecked. I remember I remember we talked about this on a previous podcast. There was somebody that we uh, all know that does a podcast was talking about somebody made comment to their uh, uh, they gave they called them the short term of what you call a transmission transmission in a car. Mm -hmm. And but then this same person turned around, called that person. Uh, use, using a derogatory term, calling them an N word. Mm. Hmm. But but it's offensive to call you one thing, but it's not offensive to call somebody something else. It's like I look at it the same way. It's like you know, people are just going too far with it, and what they're doing is they're they're sounding their horn, and then everybody jumps on the bandwagon. Mm. Let's 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 define this then. The cancel culture uh, is defined by the scholars on Wikipedia. Is Cancel culture or call it culture is a modern form of ostracism in which someone is thrust out of social or professional circles, whether it be online, on social media or in person. Those subject to this ostracism are said to have been canceled. Do we agree with that? I mean, yeah, I mean, that's what the. That's Wikipedia. That's, now. that's the, yeah, yeah, that's Wikipedia. That's and, Wikipedia. Wikipedia yeah. of Wicca. <laughs> <laughs> you know uh what do we think cancel culture is do we have any deviations to it what is cancel culture what i don't understand with the cancel part of it is is how some people get canceled and others don't because i now granted he's well, gone I mean, now, well, let's talk but, about definition so you talking about definition or are you talking about what you talking about definition. implementation i'm talking about definition what is what are we saying the definition is Let's let's define it for our conversation. Cancel culture. What is it for us? I gave you Wikipedia. Somebody's, Do you have any uh, any additions? Somebody's opinion of something, and they feel that it should be removed, or mm. boycotted, or I like um, it. Removal. I heard removal. Doctor Buddy Lee. Yeah. Boycotted. Removal, a lot of boycotting, shunning, shaming, shunning, shunning. That's not like sunning. But I guess that's two different things. That's <laughs> yeah, New that's York, two different I, is things. Is that a New York term? Sunning? Somebody got sunned? Oh, anyway. Yeah. That's kind of an old school New York term. Even, yeah. even, oh. You know what? Just thinking about it, even Freddie B made a comment about it once before about something similar to this when he was talking about there were witch hunts a so long time ago. Cancel culture was like a witch hunt? That's not like Donald Trump. Be. That's a little Trumpy there, uh, Buddy Lee. <laughs> well, that's, that's the, you know, Donald Trump calls for witch, for witch hunts, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, I, actually, I was, was going to say that about the about the other girl you know it's like an echo chamber like a witch hunt you know somebody you know it's like oh they a witch and then everybody like let's kill the witch you know but i think it's, it's also related in um misery loves company you know like a lot of people absolutely a lot of people have different planks in their eye to use a biblical term and then mm -hmm. they see they see a plank in somebody else's eye and they calling out that plank like yo look he da 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 and it make it kind of validates yourself to cancel somebody else like oh i'm actually not that bad because he said this and and let's go. So and at least so, I didn't say that. So Freddie mm -hmm. B, to some of what you just said, cancel culture could be defined as group validation. Uh, yeah. Okay. Group self. Yeah. Or or self. Well, it's it's self. But people who believe in the, the 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 group that says this is wrong, right? Is that kind of what I'm thinking about it, right? You know, like uh, this yeah. group says this. Bad people say this is wrong. So group valid. We're going to validate the group, and we're against this thing. And you, you wrong. And can you right. can you say it's a group or maybe one person, and then the group follows them and decides to join in? It's kind of like well, in, in yeah, the case you of know, in uh, school, the Justine you know, Sacco, right? That happened, right? Yeah. The one the one big guy who had all the followers retweeted her tweet, and before she landed, she was canceled. Right. Right. Yeah. And that's a long flight to South Africa. <laughs> Was it's a long flight, but imagine not knowing what's going on. Like, like you said, on her second leg of the flight, landed December twentieth, twenty fourteen, and she had started her journey like what December 
uh, 18th or whatever. It was like a two day journey getting there. I mean, just imagine like when you when you finally land in South Africa, what happens? You know, you you open your yeah, phone that was up. A terrible trip for her. Right, <laughs> that's in Africa. Got to put her shade. What he, he he said she had to put her sunnies on. The sunny. She, she we we the guy who tweeted a picture of her when she landed. That's a long hashtag canceled. Mm. So okay, we've kind of defined it. I want to know from you guys. Uh, what? Who who should be canceled? Like like if anyone should be canceled, who should be canceled and why? I'm gonna give you a few names of people that have been canceled that we know about. Mm-hmm. Now that we know what we're talking about, I want to know why. So these are the names of people who've been canceled thus far: Bill Cosby, Harvey Weinstein, Jeffrey mm-hmm. Epstein, Les Moonves, R. Kelly, um, Ellen DeGeneres has so called been canceled. Roseanne Barr. Uh, of course, Jesse Smollett. <laughs> Jesse Smollett. Jesse Smollett. Smollett. What do we call him? Sharon Smollett. Osborne. Let Sharon me... Osborne. Yep. All these people that you guys have just brought up being canceled, and the ones I brought up, these are all people still living. Yes. Do you know that they canceled Michael Jackson too? <laughs> I mean, they 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 canceled Michael. They've Jackson been trying to cancel Michael for a minute. Him. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he been dead for like years, and he's been canceling, brought him back, and tried to cancel yeah. again. He's been dead. It's like, bro, yeah. it's, it's over. No. What about Colin Kaepernick? Hmm. He was canceled initially. Initially, he, yeah, he, yeah. Women initially they canceled him, but then they realized, well, no. But then they brought him back because then it was the after the videos came out. Then all of a sudden, it's like, no, this is what I stood for, and so now he's kind of became more relevant again. But he, but but the man is not playing football, no, because he was canceled. Not because, True. not because of you know uh, 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 we we uh, a simple disagreement. Like but no, they decided that when he, when he he kneeled and it was an issue, right? And then it was the white people hashtag cancel. I mean, I, th- I think I think with, I think with Kaepernick he more so got blackballed than canceled. Well, what's the difference? Was- Monique was blackballed, right? Yeah, Monique. Yeah, Monique. Monique wasn't canceled. She was blackballed. Yeah. I, exactly. So I, I would see her more blackballed than canceled. I would say him more canceled because it was a social movement. I mean, because like with with him, because like canceled is like you like xed out of. Because cancel culture is like you xed out of the culture. Like everything you like you like ain't nobody touching you with a four foot four foot pole. And like with him, he wasn't. It wasn't like he was canceled and he was done. He was. It was just his main source of what he was doing. It's done. He, he lost his profession. Right, because like nobody wanted to sign him. Same thing with like Monique. Monique was an actress, and she wasn't canceled. She was blackballed. She still could do comedy, but right. she couldn't do movies because movies somebody else got to hire you. Well, that's the so, so that, that's the reason I brought that up though, because Monique could still work technically. Colin mm-hmm. cannot. No, Colin was still working. He's still signed by Nike. He still had all his endorsements. No, no, I'm talking about football. He wasn't playing football. The thing he wanted to do, his profession, Not, that was his profession. Right, and so what, what I'm saying is just like Monique. Monique couldn't act. Colin couldn't play football, but Monique still could do stand up. Nah, ah, Monique still, could still would, act. She still, she was still in a few pieces. She, she got hired yeah, to I act. Mean, but yeah, she still did a few pieces, but they weren't. You know, it wasn't like all the main stuff that she was doing that she was exposed to after Precious and after all the Oscar buzz and that whole run and what she was supposed to be doing. Everybody was like hands off. She was doing like a couple little things that was really beneath her, to be honest. But she had to do it because she she got blackballed. Nobody was messing with it because Tyler, Oprah, Lee sent the word out. Was like, nah, we, we ain't messing with it. Well, this is where I think we have to disagree. Then for me, Freddie B, because Monique can still act. I don't care who she's acting for. If she's not acting for the black people, she has, she has enough money to make her own. She can do her own product. Colin cannot start his own league. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like there yeah, is, I mean, there's one just, NFL. It ain't. It ain't that's, that's the point I'm making. I mean, like, like, no, no similar- Colin, Colin can play football. He could play football, but he didn't want to play for none of the mother leagues. He could have played football. Oh, well, it's, then it's there the, you go. It's, it's the same thing with Monique. Well, I didn't know, I didn't know he didn't want to play for the other leagues. I thought he want, I thought the NFL tried- was his outlet. He's in America. It's the only league that I know of that's professional in America. And, and, and exactly. Like, we, we, we talking about sports. You know what I'm saying? That you got CFL. You got other leagues out In there. America? But CFL's in Canada. Oh, he, um, oh, he got to leave his home country. Got you. 
Like this lady lost I mean, her profession. Me, like the, she the, lost the her thing, profession. The, like she 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 was a uh, PR person. That's what she was. She was a PR person. Are she you can't work. Justine? Yeah, Justine. Yeah, she can't work in PR no more. Like that's it. Now she, now she got a job back. She got a couple of years later. She got rehired by the same company actually. Yeah, but not in the same position. G, G hired to do something totally different now. She's not doing PR no more. I mean, but she 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 got a um. It was a lateral move. Like her position still is just just as big as what it was before. Oh, okay. And and, right. and after that, she went to Fan FanDuel. I mean, they oh, came back to the same company. So, but she was canceled for a second, where she was you know off limits, where she, you know she she was I think she wrote like a book or something like that. Um. So like yeah, canceled is when like you done like like Louis C K. Louis C K got canceled. He couldn't do no movies. He couldn't do no stand up. He was he was donezo. He was. You ain't nobody touching him with a four foot pole. Now he's starting to slowly come back because the cancel is wearing off. And then you know we got a short tension span, yeah. and you know you get canceled for a short m- amount of time. And then you know sooner or later somebody else will get canceled, and the focus is gonna be on them. And then when the focus is on that other person, other person, other person, then you can start to come back if you had a big enough name and so on and so forth. So um, so let's know, go, some people still like you. So let's go back Chris up to Brown the definition. Then let's go back up to the definition because that's why I wanted to define it before we got into too deep into it. So this is more social shaming. This ain't necessarily, but the problem is, is that social shaming has, um, it seems like effects on even your career, right? It, it can stop your money for a point in time. Think about uh, Kevin Hart. Yeah, he was socially shamed, and then he tried, and he came out with a with a, uh, a, a another special, another comedy special, right, for his cheating scandal with a, a Nico, is it a Nico Hart? I think is her name. Yeah, Nico. Nico Hart. Yeah, you know. So he really, irresponsible, name it irresponsible. He took advantage of it, right? But then you got people like what, uh, Candace Owens, right? How she used it in a political fashion. She said that this is something that the the left does, and then she then went on to try just recently to cancel Chrissy Teigen. <laughs> so really, this is a way of socially shaming people online, basically. That's really what this cancel culture is, right? I was going to say that's what it's become. That's what it's become. Yeah, public and shaming. F- public shaming. And see, like Freddie B men- mentioned, cancel from the culture, right? Freddie B, you said, you know, uh, when right. you were giving the, uh, the description of or your argument for why Colin Kaepernick was more blackballed, right? You said he's more blackballed because he necessarily wanted to catch him from the culture. Because for us, Colin Kaepernick was... You know, we were all like pumping our fist with him. Well, for the right. more, more, most of us, I would say, it's, it's a few NFL diehard fans out there who were like, "Man, I'm still watching his games." I <laughs> pump Kaepernick, which is crazy because I actually know some of them, black folk. <laughs> you know, but what I'm saying is, is that we have to be careful with the definition of cancel culture because then we can now apply it properly. You know, because because for example, right now they're talking about canceling Pepe Le Pew. And Dr. Seuss. And I think the most recent one is Mr. Potato Head. Mr. Potato Head, yep. Can y'all believe well, that? I, I, I haven't heard Mr. Potato Head. Why, why, is, why is he canceled? They, weren't they trying to change to to drop the Mr. or something like that to make it a non-gender? Right, they don't want a Mr. Role. or Mrs. Potato Head. It's just Potato Head now. Just Potato Head. Yes. And this comes from this company Unilever when they started taking the word Oh, they they had a commercial come out. They talked about the end of normal. They wanted to end descriptions. But it made no sense. That sounds stupid as hell. It, it, but they have a whole commercial about it. The end of normal. Commercial. And so this is the kind of thing that led to like looking at cartoons and like, oh, that oh, oh, Dr. Seuss, gotta cancel him. Pepe the Pew trying to get that cat. Cancel him. You know, because Pepe, yeah, Pepe, I, Pepe I, Le Pew's I, I whole did. thing was is that he was he was interested in the cat that was painted like a skunk. He thought it was a skunk. <laughs> you know, right? He was sexually harassing. He's selection, that cat. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. And 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 the, cra- the crazy thing about that is like a lot of this, like when Pepe Le Pew kids watch it, and when I watched it as a kid, I remember watching the commercial. I mean, the cartoon as a kid. I never thought to myself, and when I got older, I never thought like, oh. You know he is sexually harassing this cat, or he's pushing himself. And okay, that makes sense. I'm because mm-hmm. I'm laughing at him because he, he's like getting curved. Right. Like, if anything, it's like I don't want to be like Pepe Le Pew. He looked thirsty. He looked 
Right. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want, like, she don't like him. Like, right. Like, that, that's, yeah. I, I never thought, like, since I'm watching, I should do this. <laughs> right. Right. I mean, but then again, I know that's anecdotal evidence because that's just me, but that's me. You know I mean, I like, and so now we canceling Pepe Le Pew, a cartoon. <laughs> right. We're like, because that's where the comedy lies. Like, he's literally chasing her. And like what you said, it's a cat that looked like a skunk. Mm-hmm. And he he don't even know that. He's he's stupid or whatever you want to call it. He don't even know that. He's going to chase her. And he want her. And he stink. And and his name is Pepe Le Pew. Pew, stinky. And he's trying to chase her. And she just running away from him. And he trying more and more trying to get her. And she's like, no. And then at the end, he end up looking dumb. And it ends. And it's like the comedy around him being curved by her nonstop. And it's like... Like why? Why are we trying to neuter everything? Yeah, doesn't make sense to me. Well, let me ask this question, and uh, and sometimes I do things intentionally, and I try to bring bring it back. This is one of those pieces where even my disagreement were afraid to be a reason I did it intentionally because what I want to know is what exactly, what exactly is being canceled? And Alana said uh, one of the people she spoke about earlier was Ellen DeGeneres. Mm-hmm. Ellen DeGeneres was canceled after several allegations Mm -hmm. of fostering a toxic workplace culture. Mm -hmm. That's why she was canceled. But what exactly is being canceled? Because she stepped away from her show. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and and a winter. Well, I mean, I guess real quick with Ellen, I think I like, they tried to cancel her, but I think it was too much of a reach to like, we're going to cancel Ellen is, is it was too far. It was a go-go gadget reach to like, we're going to cancel Ellen. Because it wasn't like Ellen personally was going at people. It's just that she, like you said, fostered. And so she was over everything because her name was on the show. Production company did it. And so people felt like she should have knew everything that was going on. But it's still a little unrealistic to expect her to know all this. Like, could she have done better? Yes. Yeah. But I think I think she got hurt. The show got hurt. But, but she, she walked canceled. away. She it, Yeah, right. That's the what show I'm wasn't yeah, it. They, so what is being canceled here? And when Tor was canceled... After people called her out for uh, her history of not supporting black people or even elevating black creators in her own organization. However, guess what? She's still Anna Wittor. What? Mm -hmm. How how is she like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm trying to figure out how is she canceled? She can come back next year or because, you know, we had the pandemic. So it was a reason for her to take a year off. She can come back 2021 or uh, end of 2021, 2022 fashion fashion week and be back Anna Wittor again. What are we really canceling? That's what I'm saying. What are we what are we really canceling? I mean, I think like cancel culture has something to do with how you get your money. If you get your money straight from the people, people buying tickets, paper, people paying to go see your movies and stuff like that, mm-hmm. then you know, you're a part of the culture, then you can get canceled. But if you get your money behind the scenes and you pretty you you woven, you woven like for example, I would have finished my thought. If you woven into the production of stuff, like getting canceled, that's like almost impossible because you could just fall back and then, hey, look, I'm going to get my money. Just don't say my name. And, right. You know, I'm going to still do what I'm doing, but just, just you know, you just don't have to say I'm part of it. But what I was going to go into is, like, for example, you know, if you compare Thomas and I, like, I, I, I probably would get canceled or could get canceled way before Thomas because Thomas is behind the scenes. Thomas is doing more production and and that whole type of deal and so thomas could work on a set and do something and nobody really necessarily has to know that he's that he's working on it as opposed with me being a host hosting something and being talent but wait a minute let's talk about talent christy allen canceled for criticizing the oscars and for being a donald trump supporter like but she's going she's in films like she's still working (laughs) Who? Who? Who'd you say? Kirst, is it Kirstie Allen? Or Christy Allen? I may have pronounced Kirsty. Oh, oh, Kirstie Kirstie. Allen. Sorry, yeah. Kirstie Allen. Are oh, you talking about from uh, the TV show? Uh, what TV show she did? Cheers. 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 Okay. Oh, from oh, I, I had no idea she was canceled. I didn't know she was even working. Yeah, I, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't either. <laughs> she was doing Weight Watchers commercials. Yeah. Yeah, she was doing Weight Watchers. Yeah. Where's but I ain't seen her since then. Is that what happened to her? Listen, <laughs> I'm just saying. Besides the Oscars. <laughs> what? And, and that's why I asked this question because, like, Freddie B brought up the financial aspect. You know, and I started with Ellen because that's the most recent one we could think of. But I want to go to Anna. I want to go to Kurt, because what are we can- when we put the hashtag next to their name canceled? Right. Because the hashtag is hashtag canceled. Right. When you put that next to what exactly are we saying? You know, with R. Kelly, it was don't listen to his music. Right. To me, he was truly canceled because for there was a period of time where people were like, like, I remember going to an Anthony Hamilton concert. 
and the DJ played uh, Step in the Name of Love. And like the whole audience said, boo. <laughs> like he was like, boo. Like they booed. It was like, boo. They made, DJ had turned the song and played another song. Like I felt like he was really canceled. Like, wow, we really not listening to R. Kelly. Like they. Right. But with some of these other ones, and, and, and to go back to what Freddie B was saying, if you're behind the scenes, maybe this doesn't affect you as much. If you're not putting forth the tweets or you're not somebody who's up on the social media, maybe that's really the only place this really has the most effect is when you can, going back to the beginning of our show, cancel them socially, right? You know, but what is exactly being canceled? I don't know. It's so I mean, weird. It's, it's, it's people. It's people getting on one. Like with R. Kelly, he did something so egregious that people can like. You know, you feel like people felt confident. Like I think we can all get on one accord and we not messing with R. Kelly because da 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 da. But now with cancel culture, it's been it's become so prevalent to where now it's like people do something. It's like did they do something so egregious where we all can get on board? Because a lot of times. A lot of times people are just silent. Like people just ain't saying nothing, but they think in their mind, like, he ain't canceled to me. She ain't canceled to me. Like, oh, right. I'm good. But they just not saying nothing. Right. And you got, you know, it's like the, <laughs> it's the, the, yeah, the, the squeaky, the squeaky wheel gets the oil. You know what I mean? It's like you got some people who are just loud and like, oh, cancel, woo, woo, but that's only represents five percent of the population. But they so loud it 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 makes it seem like it's more. But you got this wide swath of people just they ain't saying nothing. They're like, uh, I don't feel like arguing, I don't feel like people coming at me. I'm still listening to him. I'm still gonna go see him if he or whatever the case may be. But R. Kelly is just so egregious. Like, oh, okay, yeah, it's like you, you know, it's kind of you, you, you feel weird, and and then and then like and then like actually with um with what he did is is so much prevalent, so much more prevalent than what we even know. Because I know there's so many chicks that I've talked to that have been molested in some in some form or fashion by some family member, by some mama's boyfriend that came over, and all the type of stuff, and so. Mm-hmm. It's so many girls dealing with that that we don't even know. Mm. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. they just it happened one time, and and then it's just like, okay, I I just don't want to talk about it. I want to just repress that. But it's a lot of people out here dealing with stuff like that. Especially, I mean, you know, and specifically speaking to women, because you know, obviously men are stronger than women, so you know they able to force themselves on them more. So when you have something like that come up, you got people who are on board that you don't even know that happened to mm-hmm. but it's 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 affecting them and right. they they just ain't said it so that they got they got a reason to to be on board with canceling R Kelly. Mm. Yep, they got a reason but it also with the cancel culture it can backfire. Um and in some cases where it can cause almost like you remember what happened with Chick-fil-A when they were trying to say yeah. that they're anti against, you know, they're against because of their, you know, uh, religious standpoint, they are against gay marriage. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they were trying to oh cancel Chick-fil-A. But then at the same time, it backfired because more people came out in support of that viewpoint right um also with uh they tried to cancel what's her name uh jk rowling rowling yeah uh, the creator of harry jk rowling Mm -hmm. the creator of harry potter um and so you know because she kind of came out as they tried to paint her as like um transphobic anti-trans 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 and transphobic and stuff like that but you know in her home her home country they just came out in droves and just really started supporting her so you know like it can backfire you know what I'm saying? Like you, your goal is to cancel them, but then you just actually elevated them to a whole nother level. Well, and that, well, I don't know if JK got elevated, but definitely it backfired because you know she was talking about menstruation, which is specific to a female to the female organ, you know, to right. to, to the cycle, right? So you know, I don't know how that was. I, I guess it because I, I think the comment was. Um, uh, oh no, I, I got it right here. I just found it. People who menstruate, I'm sure there used to be a word for those people. Someone help me out. Woman, wimp pound, woman. Opinion: Creating a more equal post COVID nineteen world for people who menstruate. Basically saying, if you if, if, you know, there used to be a, a word for woman. Basically, right. Uh huh. I guess it's just saying if you if you're not doing that, then you're not a woman. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what she was saying. But then people, yeah. the people, the trans community was saying that men menstruate too. And so, and then you hear that you like men, but th- what they're saying is trans men, women that become men because they're men, but they still have a cycle. Right. So right. Menstruate too. So men menstruate too. So her her point of women menstruate, and that's something indicative of a woman. 
is false. Yeah. And she's spreading a false narrative. Right. So that was the whole argument there. And so with, with stuff like that, you know, especially when you get into the, the genders and the sexes and all that type of stuff, it's like going back to the Unilever, Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head, it's like, fam, men and, and women, we're different. It's fine. It's right. <laughs> we're like, different. Like, like, oh, my God. Let's just let, you know, like like how how we get into a place to where there are no men and women. It's just people. Like, no, I don't I don't want that world because when I go shopping, I want to go to the men's section to get the clothes that I want. And yeah. I, I want to go be... to the women's. <laughs> well, let me, right. Let me, put, let me put it to you something even more basic than that. You know, it's like when you remove the label, right? If you have a glass jar and I pour water in one jar and I, pop, I pour some poison, it's clear, in another jar and there's no label on it and you are thirsty. If you have no way to identify what you're drinking, one may kill you. One may nourish you, you know? And so the thing that I, I recognize is that a world without labels makes things difficult. We, we, yes, we can be equal. You can have equal amounts in each jar, but they are not the same liquid. Right. <laughs> you know, so we could be that's equal. We yeah, could be equal, is. but not the same. And that's the thing that a lot of people uh, just can't wrestle with. And I had this whole conversation with, um, uh, I, I went to my cousin's wedding and one of my other cousins is dating a girl. And we were having this, 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 this deep conversation about, you know, like labels and all this other stuff. She's like, I don't, why do we have to label things? Why do we label? Cause I, I was like, because I don't want to be confused when I drink out of the jar. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't want to, I'm looking for water, not death. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's See, just that, that, that that's, that's that emotion though. You know, she's it, speaking from just pure emotion, no logic. And the thing is, is that what I recognize the, the guy in the uh, TED talk said something that was really, I, I thought was a, uh, a nice, a nice quotable. He said, Twitter is a mutual approval machine. Yeah. What? Why is that? Because people like to surround themselves with people who agree and feel the same way. Mm-hmm. Echo chamber. Yep. Yes. So now that we got to this point, let me ask y'all this question. Can we, without putting the tag of, of, of cancel culture, can we still shame people without canceling them totally? Cause I feel like we're in a society today where we can't really do that. You know, if we're gonna can't, we, if we're gonna shame, we gotta cancel them. No, nah, I think I think I think those days are done with the advent of social media. You know, because now now I can somebody can post something and and then I can read it and and then I'm like I'm on the fence. I don't know really know what to think. And and before I get a chance to digest it myself and read it and let it ruminate in my mind and me come to a conclusion on my own. I'm gonna see the comments. I'm gonna see the replies. I'm gonna see the retweets, and then yeah, that's true. Those can sway me left or right. It's like I'm mm-hmm. on the fence, and then I see the first seven, and people, you know, obviously there's bias. Like if if like with old girls tweet, um, headed to Africa, hope I don't catch AIDS. Just kidding, I'm white. I can read that, and it's like, hmm, I want to think about that. But then the first five comments I see, you know, if it's somebody who people who were terribly offended by it. And then they go onto the the negative side on that side, and they just explaining that. Then it's like, oh, that all that makes sense. And then I can just read that, and then stop there. And it's like, yeah, I'm offended too. Vice versa, mm-hmm. I, the first five comments I see could be like, like, yo, that was I see, I see, you know, ha ha, that was funny joke. I see what you did there. You know, I see your little tongue in cheek. Oh, you said that because yeah, of course, only people can get AIDS are black people, white people. It's impossible to get AIDS. You know, it's kind of like a joke that I I make. That we that we started um, in my in my room, in my dorm in college, I had uh, th- two other roommates, and uh, one of the roommates he had brought a girl over and and rolled her, didn't mm. use a condom, mm. and so and so uh, you know we he came out we were juggling him like oh yeah you don't need to use a condom because yeah once you once you turn twenty five, and uh, you and you and you got a degree you know you good because he had a master's and so he yeah. was 25 like yeah you don't even use a comedy you, you you over 25 with a degree you know that you, makes no sense good. right can, right right you can raw you can raw you, you you know you can't get a's the only people who got a's is people under 25 with no well, under 25 and people over 25 with no degree so we just made that stupid tongue-in-cheek joke being sarcastic at the fact that he met this chick at a party brought her over and rawed her mm-hmm. and made that silly decision you know what i mean so we was poking fun at it so that's kind of like the spirit of her joke so you know, you read it, and then if you see people who un- who understood that point and then said that and supported it, then you be like, oh, okay, just a joke, and you'll be fine. But it depends on what you see, because you're on the fence. Depends on what you see first, and then what the ex- explanations are, and then you'll go with that. So, 
you know, it's it's gonna be witch hunt, it's gonna be echo chamber, it's gonna be we in social media. If you notice before social media, you heard something, nigga, you had to figure that out on your own. Yeah. Yeah. It's something interesting because uh, uh, there's a psychological um, uh, uh, studies that have been done about group polarization and, you know, like the opinions of each person in the group. And when somebody does something first, how the group, because we're social beings and we communicate socially, a lot of times when somebody does something, how people tend to follow the first person to do a thing. And I think that is what has bled into social media, right? Being online is is that if we get a consensus or a group con- a consensus, and one or two people led that 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 direction, we all start to go naturally into that into that direction, because really we think like oh we're all individual individual individualistic thinkers, but we really do not have as much control over our thoughts as we believe we have, you know. Not to say that we can't break it, but there's been a lot of studies that have been done on this, and. And a lot of times they, they talk about like how people in a room, if you ask them all the same question, the first the way the first person answered, unless somebody refutes it immediately, if two people answer that way, more than likely the group is going to go lean in that direction. You may have one or two outliers, but the group is going to lean in that direction, you know, social proof. Right. And so I think with what we got going on with cancel culture is th- this is like a grand experiment in our in the human psyche, how people just. You know, they like I said, they group together around the ideas. And they just ah, this is all us. But if 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 there is something that somebody does that is shameful, it, it seems that cancel culture has provided an opportunity to shame people. Now, maybe we shouldn't totally cancel them, but you know, it does it it does call out things where there's no justice, right? Because there's certain things where we just have, like for example. You know, uh, just recently there was a uh, the conviction of um, the uh, was it Derek, the guy who uh, killed um, oh Derek Chauvin, Derek Chauvin, yeah. yeah. Like we just had that conviction, but man, before that, like we weren't we're not getting, and we still really aren't getting police convictions in mass. And so, right. how do we call out these injustices, right? For all these major trans these major transgressions that are out there, you know, and this seems like it's like the the only way we could do it and not just to call it like hyperbolic statements or whatever, you know, that are cringeworthy, but to really call out real injustices, you know? So uh, it's kind of hard because I think, yes, maybe we shouldn't cancel everybody, but definitely we need some way to still shame people who are doing things that we as a group and as a community feel like are wrong. You know, I, I would uh-huh. say, I would say leaning on somebody's neck period is wrong, but leaning on somebody's neck, put a knee on somebody's neck for eight, or nine minutes or however long, and then he dies as a result, that's wrong. Period. And if, if Period. the courts if the courts are not going to handle it, where do we go? Uh, I mean, the thing is, is that a lot of what cancel culture is, it reminds me of 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 the fight against gangs. And uh what I mean by that is that and I'm talking about gangs worldwide. I ain't talking about just local domestic gangs. Oh, the Ooh. ideology, right, that that was created. Now, you know, it's 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 a situation of like you got you got these large, you like you got these large criminal enterprises that traffic drugs primarily because there's so much money in that, and then a lot of these places like Manuel Noriega and you hear about these big time right, names, right. Uh, the Black Widow, El Chapo, all these guys, and so what happens is you know these international police, Interpol or whoever, they they cut they cut off the top. And so they 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 nab the the ringleader of it all, but that doesn't that doesn't do anything to the whole organization. Drugs still gonna flow all of it. All, only thing it does is splinters all these different organizations, and then make them then violence goes up because there's no there's no structure or anything. So it actually makes things worse going at the top, mm-hmm. going at Manuel Noriega because he he was the leader and he had a a, a nice a nice structure it was a criminal enterprise once you take him out then you, under him you got two or three people that's under him so once he's gone then those three are trying to figure out who gonna be the the leader and so they gonna fight and then that fighting just trickles down to where there's confusion and then one may break off and the other break off now you got three separate enterprises that's smaller and more nimble to move and then everybody's just more violent 
And so it's like, okay, we're not actually stopping any drugs. We're not actually making putting a dent into anything. We just took out the leader. That's it. Ain't nobody going to stop. It's too much money to, oh, he got years in prison. He got life in prison. Oh, I ain't going to do that. Niggas making billions of dollars. Mm-hmm. They're going to take, they gonna, they take a penitentiary chance. That's why it's called penitentiary chances. They're going to take these penitentiary chances because it's the, 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 the outcome is too great. Mm-hmm. So when you look at cancel culture, you got these people who, who are big, you know, big name people that get canceled, but the root of the problem is still there. It's like, okay, they get canceled. Somebody else going to just fill in and probably be the exact same person who did you cancel him for. Right. And to, they just going to be so smart enough. found not, out. Right, right. Or, right. They're going to be far, smart enough. Yeah. They're going to be smart enough not to tweet something dumb or not to do this dumb, but they the same person. They Like, mm. so if somebody tweets something racist, they get canceled. Boom, they canceled. Somebody else jumps into their position. They're just as racist. Probably more. They just like, nigga, let me not say no racist stuff. Right. Just let me just let me keep it in under wraps. So like you got Donald Sterling. He got canceled. He that's getting canceled. <laughs> he got canceled. He was made to sell his team. He's done everywhere. He just sitting on his money that he sold the team for and he just out the way. But somebody like him, he said all what he said, an old girl taped him. But that was his ideology because he's older. These younger cats, same ideology. They just not gonna be talking to their mistress about it. Right. They just gonna like right. they gonna make sure like okay, make they sure do my mistress say it. not record me right. Right. They they ain't gonna they ain't gonna talk to their mistress about they they indiscretions. They gonna talk to they might mention a little something to their homeboys or they talking coded language or like giving like little looks stuff that you can't record them and if, even if you do they can weasel a lot of it. So the root of the problem is still there. It just we just cancel them mugs left and right and it's like. Ain't nothing stopping. Like people still getting right. People still getting taken advantage of. People still getting molested. People still not getting positions because of their color. People, it's still happening. Yeah, you know what mm-hmm. I mean. It's just, it's just, it's just dressed up. Be yeah. prolific on a pig. It's still a pig. So let me ask you this then: Alana Boo, Freddie B, Doctor Buddy Lee, mm-hmm. and maybe I start. I'm gonna start with Alana Boo on this one. Is cancel culture then simply an attempt to be socially justice or is it uh, uh, to be socially just or is it more of a an attempt to have like a cathartic release for everybody? I, I think it's the, the first. It's an attempt to be socially just. I think the intention behind it is. It's, it's relatively like what you're going for. You know, you want people to be mm. held accountable. You know, you want certain injustices to stop, you know. So I think the intent is good. I just think the execution is just just all wrong, you know. Um, and I think, you know, for some people, and then some people still are getting, some, some people's intention is wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, they just want to counsel people just because you don't like them or just because, like I said, they have a differencing, uh, difference of opinion from you. Um but I think the whole original point behind it was to hold people accountable, mm-hmm. which is what you want to do. But at what at what point do you hold them? Like, where is the line to say, OK, I'm going to hold you accountable, but I'm going to I'm going to give you the opportunity to fix it. There's no there's no real opportunity given to fix it. It's just like, oh, you did wrong. So you're just out. You know, you're you're just it's just over for you, you know, point blank period, nail in the coffin. Um, there's no there's no opportunity to for them to bounce back, to apologize, to actually learn from their mistakes. That's why Kevin Hart was saying that he, initially when his situation happened, he was like, I'm not going to apologize because, you know, initially when I said that, that's how I felt at that time. But since then, I have grown, you know, to know better, to do better. So. At what point do we hold them accountable, but also give them opportunity to say that, OK, I've changed, you know, and my opinion may not be the same as it once was. OK, so let me challenge you a little bit then, Alana. Mm-hmm. I'm going to read three names. Let's see okay. if you can. First name, Christine Scarlett. Is that the chick who just did that tweet? Well, who did the tweet a long time ago? Mm-mm. I'm, I'm going to read two more names. Okay. Pamela Smart. Don't know her. Mary Kay. These three women are just a few of the famous women who slept with underage kids. They were teachers who, who slept, slept with, their with students. underage kids. Yes. They teachers who slept with their students. Okay. The latter the last one I read, she slept with a, a man who was a, a boy who was twelve years old. Okay. Those teachers 
got blasted all over social media. Uh-huh. And the justice came in the form of them getting arrested and having mm-hmm. to go through trial. Mm-hmm. But do they get do they get a chance to redeem themselves? I mean, they could, they should never be allowed to teach again. No, they shouldn't. So that's why I'm I kind of challenging. Like some people might need to be canceled. Yeah, I mean, I I agree with that. Like some people, certain situations should be like you know what I'm saying are cancelable. I'm saying for those who are just trying to cancel any and everybody, just for every you know like gotcha. little infraction. Um, like I was like I was saying like with the Lizzo situation with Dave Chappelle and his opinion and his poking fun of the Michael Jackson situation. You know what I'm saying? Like so for those people who are in those positions. To me, those are not cancelable offenses. Mm. But for those women that you just named, you know, who are clearly pedophiles, yeah. no, they shouldn't be around children. And, and, and this this clearly gave the internet some type of cathartic release because it was like, oh, good, I'm so glad I was able to get this out and say what yeah. I wanted to say about them. I'm glad they're going to jail, right? You know, whatever. They, I, I don't even know if they would. I think they, I think they, some of them ended up getting lesser time than we thought, but something happened. Yeah, Doctor Buddy Lee. An attempt to be socially just or just more of a cathartic release? Cancel culture. Tell us. I think it's a mix of both. I believe for some, yes, they have the they actually feel passionate about something, you know, like like we were talking about someone getting sexually assaulted and then they see this situation and then they want to speak up. And then there's others who step up and speak up to. I get that. Then there's those others who I just don't like you. And so right. I'm going to say what I got to say. And it's a more of a control thing. Like mm. it's kind of like, like I was saying earlier, like some, like kids in school, you know, the most popular kid in school, everybody wants to hang out with him or her. And so they agree and they start going along with other things. So I look at it. It can be both ways. Cause some, some people are trolling to find things to speak against. And then, you know, troll and then there's also, and, and then there's others who, you know, who are really genuinely for something, uh, some change or make a difference and things like that. Freddie B, I, I want to step up the the uh, the question a little bit for you. And a lot of and Dr. Buddy Lee, you know, once he once he finishes answering, I, I would love to if y'all want to chime into this. Sure. Please do. Step, stepping it up when you get to me. What what I do? <laughs> Selfish. Selfie. <laughs> Selfish. <laughs> is cancel culture in your mind or your opinion, is it does it favor humans over ideology? Or does it favor ideology over humans? Um it definitely favors ideology over humans. Um, uh, yeah. Because cancel culture, you know, you just canceling pieces of the culture, but you're not improving the culture. And so that's the whole spirit. That should be behind it that you're improving the culture wherever that culture exists whether it's in a company whether it's societal whether it's personal familial whatever the case may be you should you should be improving the culture but there's no improving happening it's just like you got a house and it's mold in on the ceiling of your bathroom and you just go and you just knock the ceiling out and you just take the ceiling out take all the mold out the ceiling and then that's it you don't mm-hmm. then go back in and redo the ceiling and remodel the bathroom. You just leave an empty ceiling. Like nobody would do that in the house, but that's what we're doing in our culture, in society. We just taking stuff out and then okay, we're not improving it. So racial, um, sexual, all these different types of things. It's like if you're gonna cancel somebody for some some insensitive racial remark that they made, then improvements needs to be made. You know, it needs to be mm-hmm. like, okay, that's now good. you're hiring that's more good. black people. You know, like, you know, you know, we had a reckoning with race or whatever like that. And you saw like all the websites change stuff about black people. Now, now they just switched to the Asian stuff. And now you're going to website is Asian hate and all the other type of stuff. And you don't think all the black stuff gone. You know what I mean? But like, where's the improvement? Did you, did, you know, where, where, and, and then like, you know, a lot of places they'll, they'll donate money. Like, oh, I'm donating $250,000 to these, to these groups of mm-hmm. people. But the thing mm-hmm. is, is that, 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 that actually doesn't help the cause because a lot of these groups are, you know, in the pocket of the company that's doing it. So they, and then like, you know, you 250K across five 
uh, 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 five spots is not even a hundred K. It's like a, cu- a couple of dollars, which ain't much. And so really that just goes in the pocket of two people that work there. They get like a little raise. And then the person who negotiated, who handled it, they get a cut of that. And that money doesn't change anything. What changes stuff is in this company, like, okay, you know what? Our percentage of hiring, we only got 4% black people in executive ranks and upper management. Okay, we're going to change that to where in this next in the next five years, we're going to have 20% representation of black people. Now, somebody said that. Okay, now we're talking about something. Because now you got black people who are gainfully employed, who, who making money, building wealth on their own. Mm. Now we're talking about something, but that's not what happens. Mm-hmm. And so the culture just stays the same. But we just, like I said, going back to the whole gang reference, we just cutting the tops off. We're not digging it up at the root. You know, a weed, weed in your yard. That's like them dandelions. You just cut the top of the dandelion off, the little yellow part. Bing! And it then the right still there. That's stupid as hell. Like, you know, yep. it makes no sense. But that's, that's what this cancel culture is. Mm. Humans over ideology, ideology over humans. Cancel culture definitely seems to be ideology over humans. But we got to get to a place where we... Remember who we are. We're all human. And yeah, we make mistakes. And yeah, we may need to be shamed. But does that mean we need to be put away forever? Be canceled? I don't know. I mean, step in the name of love, that's, that's a hard one not to listen to. But that's a good one, boy. A family picnic. <laughs> you know. <laughs> He's got a, you know, Chris Rock had a, a famous joke. And I, I wonder if he uh, has uh, recanted this joke. But I think he talked about. R. Kelly peeing on the girl and then coming out with a new song like, but that's look that that's a real good one. I don't know if y'all heard that joke before from Chris Rock. I feel I feel like I, I feel mm-hmm. like that sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah he's like, this, the next that's a, he, he made another one. <laughs> well, look, whoo, man. I mean, listen, are all hearts and minds clear because I feel like we have way too many feelings about cancel culture, and I do too. I do too. But mm-hmm. I'm, I think you guys really illustrated, you know, where we are today with cancel culture. And I'm glad you talk about where we need to go. Hopefully we can start to, as Freddie B said, not leave the roof off the house and start rebuilding the house. I hope that we can get more clarity on what people say versus putting our own opinion to it before canceling people. Yeah. Don't be so quick to judge per se. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now we all judge, Mm -hmm. but don't, don't throw your judgment out there to make other people jump on your bandwagon. Well, yeah, yeah. Don't be quick to judge. You can judge. Don't be quick. Quick to judge means means step back for a second, read, absorb, and try to figure some things out. Try to understand what's really going on. Is what what's being said about what what's happening the truth, or is it is or is it just a snap judgment and we all just running with it? Well, listen, we got way too many feelings about cancel culture today. Uh, send us a message our handles are in the description below let us know how you feel about cancel culture today we love to hear your feedback uh this has been a good one i've been here with shemaine man freddie b and it's your girl lana boo in the building that's right because she she wants to outside a little hot right now and who else won't. it's the good doctor dr buddy lee still ain't sent me no report on this good doctor stuff but we're gonna we'll get your ratings and i'm yours truly T staples and make sure you catch us next time when we have too many villains. Peace.